My guest today is a lead singer for a band making their return 17 years since their last album. I'm talking about Galactic Cowboys, who have a brand new album called Long Way Back to the Moon, coming out November 17th. I'm pleased to welcome Ben Huggins. Roy, hi, this is Ben Huggins. Hey, Ben, nice to meet you. Pleasure. You too. I gotta tell you, it was a real surprise to see a new album coming out. From you guys, I was a I was a big fan, you know, like a lot of people back a, a while ago, and always loved the the first two albums, especially Space in Your in Your Face is just one of my favorites. Didn't expect, uh, so it was a pleasant surprise. What made you guys uh, want to return? Bill Evans, uh, friend of Monty's, and uh, he's been representing us with uh, with mascot for this whole you know the procedure uh, process. I know what mm-hmm. I meant to say. <laughs> uh, he got a hold of Monty probably 2015, something like that, and uh, asked him, you know, if, if he thought that we might want to do it. And I said, I don't know, let me ask him. So he got a hold of us and we were into it. And so the process started, and it took a while to get to the point where uh, it looked like anybody was interested. And, and once they did start getting interested, we were like, well, I guess we got to write some songs. <laughs> so, <laughs> We got to start getting together. I, I would fly up and, and work with Monty at his uh, his place, and uh, and then when uh, you know Dane and I got together a few times uh, in Houston, and we got, got closer. You know, we, we just started flying Monty down for sessions here in Houston, or there in Houston. I'm not in Houston right now, but mm-hmm. so it you know it worked itself out. But uh, yeah, it just it was kind of fell out of the air as far as we're concerned because it was no one really had any plans to do anything and and bill just started asking the question and and once he did it was you know he opened that that uh that box up and let everything out (laughs) that's awesome yeah bill is great uh he's a good guy um so you know the the new album uh long way back to the moon which comes out november 17th on mascot it has that sort of a return to that sound of the the first couple of albums so you know, as the al- as the band went on into the the albums after the first two, the sound kind of changed. What brought you back to this sort of original sound with the layered harmonies and the and the sort of little bit of progressive influence? You know, I, I think I think that it was just what we did together. You know, and and so because Dane was gone for like four or five albums, he had, he left after Space in Your Face. He had he had actually been there when we were we were putting uh, machine fish together but left before it was it actually you know we got the record deal with metal blade at that time and so wally came in but uh i think it's just the it's a natural progression of what we were at that time i don't know and i, I think not not including dane but i mean dane's experiences with his band uh, uh he, he had the Sonya brothers you know and then uh, monty doing crunchy for a while and and just everything everything that we experienced in between the, you know, space in your face and, and this, this album, uh, uh, a long way back to the moon. I think that's just a natural thing. Cause I don't know that any of us went out of our way to go, Hey, let's go back and do what we did right. back then. Cause it was just, you know, wasn't, wasn't like an intentional thing or anything like that. Well, when you hear the, uh, the first single in internal masquerade, which you guys have a video out for now, uh, I mean that just sounds like you guys right right there. Everything that the heavy riffs and the 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 great vocal harmonies. How hard was it to recapture how to do those vocal harmonies, or was that again just something that fell into place pretty quickly? Man, I I know it feels it feels like a long time. It, if I if I think about it in terms of the actual years, it feels like a long time. But when I get in a room with Galactic Cowboys, and it, it just the thing that we do together happens. Right. And so, like, now, now some of it was, like, the very first song on the album is uh, 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 In the Clouds. And In the Clouds is has an interesting uh, story behind it. It was the very first song that Galactic Cowboys ever wrote. Right. And, uh, and it just never made an album. So when, we, when you introduce a new album... That may be it. it. When you introduce a new album with a song that was the very first song you ever wrote, <laughs> and then and then it grows from there. I think I think the connection to the past are, you know happens automatically because yeah. it's already it's already kind of embedded by the time you you get through the first song. So, but uh, 
the uh, the harmonies themselves it just always happened that way that we were able to stack our harmonies. Uh, um, you know, Alan does does most of the falsetto stuff. I do, you know, I do high stuff too, but most of mine is screaming high stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then Monty is always right there in the meat of it, in the middle, and Dane kind of floats around, you know, in between and finds a place, you know, and so it just it just happens naturally when we get together and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes some songs are harder than others to come up with harmonies on, but for the most part, just the way, the way Monty writes, the way I write, you know, it, it, it just, it just kind of, it layers. And since, since it can layer, it, it, it happens naturally. Yeah. And they're, they're interesting, difficult harmonies for anybody that's not familiar. They're not your standard, you know, somebody take an octave higher type of stuff. So, uh, that that was always something interesting to me in the in the music. Another song on the album that's really cool is is a track called Zombies, um, which uh, has a sort of a, a little bit I think intended to be like a ballad. But it, it 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 what's the story behind that lyrically? Because obviously with the title Zombies, that's got to give it a different spin, right? Well, we when when Monty first wrote it, he had well, I mean, he had most everything i i i just kind of came in and filled it in with a story uh that kind of supported what he was already thinking which is it, it, it kind of goes back to the same type of writing style that we did on uh, the very first very, very first album uh he he brought in most almost everything for i'm not amused and, and he goes I, I don't know i just want to write a song about how we're not amused and i said okay so we'll just call it i'm not amused okay <laughs> So, and then we went from there and, and, you know, I kind of got the feel of the song and, and, and wrote, you know, based on, you know, we're not amused. And, and the same thing happened with, with zombies. He's like, I want us to write a story about the, the last day of the world when, when everything's going to hell, but you meet the, the right person. And even though, you know, you don't have any time left, you you know, you're fully invested. You know? <laughs> I was like, okay, all right. I think I can take that out on, you know, I, uh, kind of a love in the ruins sort of thing. And, uh, and so that's, that's basically what it is. It's like, you're, you're fighting off zombies, but we kind of tried to tie in a little bit of just, you know, not just a regular zombie, like, you know, uh, like walking dead or something like that. Like, no, it's like not, well, it's not who, about that. Right. Yeah. When you hear the words, it's, it doesn't, that's not what it's really about, but, uh, no, it's, yeah. it's really funny. No, that's a cool, well, that's a cool spin take? on it. Let me ask you that. What is your take? Well, that, I, when you that's, hear that's sort of where where my mind jumped because the lyric is, uh, "What it all makes sense to me now. I would find you on the last day of the world, something like that, right? Is that that's about right? Right. And uh, right. but then with the title "Zombies," I was like, "Well, how did <laughs> how did those two work together? Uh, so maybe that's they're being chased by zombies, but they found that now they found the other person." So right. that, that was the only th- where my head went, but um, no, really clever. But but, but the, if you if you look if you look at like the lines about uh, of course now I'm not gonna be not gonna be able to remember. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's basically uh, walking to the beat of technology, uh, bowing the knees of the powers that be. Uh, it seems society has a bad disease, apocaly- apocalyptic uh, psychology. Right. But that you know, it's just like people are obsessed with you know the end of the world. People are obsessed with you know, everything going to hell in a handbasket, but they're all, it's all because they carry around this, this, this device in their hand and they're updated second by second on, on the worst things that happen right. in that second. It may be hundreds of thousands of miles away. It may be, you know, you know what I'm saying, not hundreds of thousands, no, but no, totally, many totally. thousands of miles away, but, but it's like it hit them right there because they got this thing in their hand. And so they're walking around, you know, to the beat of technology going, Oh my God, the world's going to end. The world's going to end. Wait, stop. Put the phone down. You know, walk away from a screen for a second and look around you. People are still going to work. People are still, you know, you know, going out and having a drink. They're going to dinner. You know, they're going to movies. They're, they're ha- enjoying life. So put the phone down for a second and enjoy life. <laughs> That's a, it, you're that's right. No, you, but you're right. That's another. That's another way the the world is working for sure. No, that makes perfect sense. You know what I always wanted to ask you guys. So, what's the ga- the gas mask thing? And and that's the recurring theme with all the album covers over the years. What where'd that start? I got to tell you, um, Monty started that uh, way back when we did Machine Fish. I don't even know where he got the uh, 
got the gas gas mask back then in the and I, we all took turns wearing it for pictures and stuff like that. And we had a, a I think it's on the inside of the, like when you pull the disc up, you can see a picture of us and we're standing. There's a bridge in the background. Monty's got the mask on. And I I, I think he just picked it up as an artistic theme. And <laughs> and then he, I think he actually had a, a series of paintings that he did with uh, a guy he calls Gas Fist, which he would probably be the one to ask about that that particular character. But uh, but it's just been a theme uh, that runs back to like the '90s. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, his intention was with that. But I, it, he's a cool character. So have uh, you? Yeah, um, this character is really cool. Ha, you know, all the guys have been involved in different projects. Have you also been uh, uh, musically into into other stuff in the last you know 10, 15 years? I did one project, one project between uh, the end of Galactic Cowboys in 2000. And uh, this release, and it was uh, with uh, with Dane's brother, Len Sonier, and my son was on bass, and and the Sonier brothers' uh, drummer Chad was was on drums, and it was called uh, Gristle, uh, and uh, the the name of the disc was uh, was Cold Blue Sky. It actually never came out on disc; it was all uh, digital, straight to straight to digital. All so. right, yeah, I never saw but that. It's on it's on Apple, you know, it's on uh, iTunes and on Amazon, but. It was more of a departure because I'd never written with anybody. I mean, besides the Black Cowboys, so it has a uh, to me it has a totally different feel to it. So back when um, I guess it was I wasn't not sure if it's the first album or, or Space in Your Face, but you were on tour with Dream Theater when they were with their Images and Words album. Is that is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. So the, you guys played at a, a club. Uh, where I used to live, like down the street from me, and I was actually in high school at the time, and I remember not <laughs> being able to go to the show because it was during the week. One of my biggest, re- to this day, one of my concert regrets of missing that oh, show. Man. Because uh, I wish you would have been able to make it. It was a great show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that place. If I, I don't know if you remember, it was a place called the Plus Five Lounge. That place was had to have been a hundred people fitting. That I don't even know. It was like a super tiny place, but. Uh, a place that Where, I, what what location? It was uh, it was in uh, like uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida's uh, uh, Davie, Florida, around there. Oh, a little a little bit north of Miami. Huh. Okay. Yeah, but uh, no, it wasn't the one that had the the trailer. I mean, the trailer, the uh, the train car attached to it, was it? No, no, but it was okay. in like a little strip mall. It was the weirdest place, but. Um, I wanted to ask you if you remember any any interesting, funny memories from that tour, and 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 uh, you know just were being with those guys when they were first starting out. Well, I, I I tend to have the same memories. They're great memories, but I tend to have the same ones because I focus on you know really fun times, you know. And I and I, I'm not saying there were bad times. That was a great tour for us. Absolutely fantastic. But. Uh, one of the really fun things that happened was uh, at somewhere along the way, and this is before anybody else in the band started singing. Uh, this is before Mike started singing for sure. And, uh, and I don't think anybody else actually sings in the band, but uh, I mean, besides James, James and you know, Mike uh, started singing later, but at that time, they, nobody else was singing. It was just James. And so they asked us, you know, do you want to sing backup vocals on one of the songs? Just come out and sing harmonies and then, you know, leave the stage. We're like, sure. Why not? <laughs> so uh, we we worked up our own harmonies uh, for for take the time and uh, and uh, we you know sang it for for them and uh, James wanted us to sing what was exactly what was on the album. I was like, okay, all right, we can do that. It was fine. Uh, we done more of a Beatley thing uh, on it, but uh, anyway, so so. You know, he he got what he wanted, and we and so we started singing it like that that night, and we'd come rushing out, and you know, and cause a havoc, and and then run away, and they, you know, do the middle section, and we come back and sing the big ending, and oh, that's that was cool. it. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. But uh, then, I was, the two guys that we hung out with most were Mike and Kevin. Kevin Moore was the old uh, uh, keyboard player, right? And and Kevin would write these limericks. And every once in a while, he just slide one across the table to me, and I read it and start laughing. <laughs> and I said, I said one one time, I said you should you should get up and you should do that during the show. And he goes, Oh no, I couldn't do that. 
but you could. And I was like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes hey, guys, I, I want to have Ben come out and read a limerick. I'm like, yeah, okay. So so every night from that night out, uh, or every new city, he'd, he'd, he'd uh, write a limerick. He'd give it to me, and I'd kind of semi-memorize it, but I'd carry it out there anyways. And they'd stop in the middle of a song. I can't remember which song it was. One of the long, one of the long songs. Stop in the middle of a song. I'd come out, get in the spotlight. I'd take a limerick wearing some weird hat, and, and then you know I'd take a bow and leave, and they'd finish the song. So, oh, that, that is was, awesome! That was, I would love to see that. Yeah. I wonder if there's a video of that somewhere. There may be. I I don't know. I did it quite a few times. That's fantastic. Are you guys uh, planning on touring? Well, see, we're we're going to play Joe's. I I hate to say touring because. It's it's difficult for us to get away for that length of time. Right, like when sure. I when I think of touring, it's like it's like you know you got to have a couple of months that you can get away, and we just don't have that. So we are definitely going to do shows, um, but and they will not. That's they probably won't be back to back to back to back to back to back. So it, we'll we'll set them up in in a schedule that works with 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 the band and everybody individual in the band and then and then we'll just go from there so so yes we are planning on doing shows but not uh not a, a tour in earnest unless something incredibly out of the ordinary happens and, and things blow wide open which you know nobody's holding their breath we just want to have a, a nice uh a nice release and, and let, let everybody who wants to get it come and get it and, and this is, one of the things that i think is great is we're doing an lp release on this and, and yeah. we haven't done that since the very first album so yeah no so it's, it, the vinyl, whole vinyl resurgence has been pretty wild because it, it, I know it had been out there for a while um, but now it uh, just became uh, massive I mean it's 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 yeah. crazy it's all over the place yep which is very cool I mean the change in the music business over the last 15 years also has got to be pretty amazing for you to now be coming back and trying to put an album out in this in this climate with everything being digital and all this. I mean, that, how do you look at it now? So so we kind of got used to doing some things on our own, like, you know, if we're going to do shows in Houston or something like that. We book our own shows. We, you know, order our own T-shirts and do stuff like that. Those things, it's like, that's no big deal. But we always had someone that took care of all the big things, you know, like uh, the publicity schedules. And, you know, there was, it was just... There, there was always someone on the payroll somewhere right. <laughs> that was taking care of the, the the really big important things, and uh, and now we're having to scramble because we're we're not you know we're not used to having to do some of the things that we're having to do and answer the kind of questions we are not interview wise but just sure just you know someone calls up and says what what about this and that you know like, hell I don't know somebody somebody else used to do that <laughs> <laughs> so it's different in that we don't have uh staffing the way we used to and but but you know and it, nobody expects that it's, it's 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 better to to be closer to the 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 music and closer to the the people that are that are putting out the record and stuff like that so more involvement from us is a good thing it's just that we're not used to it we're not like not used to having to uh get in there and, and, and do the things that somebody else used to do. We just like, ah, somebody else has got that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, you're right. That's a big change for all these bands. Uh, well, listen, real honor to speak with you, man. I'm, I'm excited for the album. I love the new record. It's fantastic. Uh, oh, and thanks. it's great, great to have you guys back. Um, I've, like I said, I was a, a big fan for, for a long time and, uh, glad, glad there's a new album out. That's all I can say. I hope everybody picks it up. Long way back to the moon comes out November 17th. Make sure you get it. And uh, hopefully I'll get to catch a show this time. Yeah, hopefully so. All right, man. Thank you. I'll talk to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks to Ben for the interview. We're going to close with a track off the new album, Long Way Back to the Moon. This is Zombies. For upcoming news and interviews, please check theprogreport.com, follow us on Facebook, at The Prog Report on Twitter, or download the podcast on iTunes. Thanks. Oh, here they come!